Hi. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the new pack channel functionality introduced inside of Mari Extension Pack 4. Pack channels are a useful tool to reduce memory, and they work by packing together multiple grayscale channels into a single RGBA output channel. This is very common in usage in uh, game real-time content, just to reduce the memory requirements on your graphics card. Before I'll proceed, let me quickly go over some vocabulary I'm going to use in this tutorial, otherwise it's going to be quite confusing. When I'm talking about channels, I'm usually talking about them in a context of Mari channels. So in Mari, a channel is something you can export from your channel palette, and they consist of a red, green, blue, and alpha channel. These channels, the red, green, blue, and alpha channel, I will be referring to as color channels, while anything else I'll just refer to as a channel. You can access the first way to create a pack channel by right-clicking in the channel palette and choosing the new Add Pack Channel. In here we can add new rows, we can select rows and delete them, or we can delete all rows at once. We can set up presets here at the top right, allowing you to configure your pack channels once, and then in the next session, you just launch the dialog and create a pack channel straight away, because the configuration works off the channel names, meaning that any channel name you select in this project, as long as the channel name is the same in the next project, it will inherit everything correctly. Let's take a quick look at each row of the pack channel. Each row corresponds to one pack channel that you would create if you confirm the dialog. If the row is deactivated with this checkbox at the beginning, the pack channel for this row would not be created. We can give the pack channel a name, and then we configure each color channel of the pack channel to inherit a certain Mari channel. So for example, the red channel should have the roughness channel, the green channel, my metalness channel, and my blue channel, my amine occlusion. For each color channel, I can again select which color channel of the Mari channel should be used in this channel. So, for example here, because the roughness channel again is a Mari channel, which consists of a red, green, blue, and alpha channel, we need to select which color channel to make up the color channel of the pack channel. I hope you're not playing a drinking game whenever I say channel, but it's kind of unavoidable. You can set what resolution the created pack channel should have. So, for example, here you can either choose a flat resolution or inherit the resolution from one of your um, color channels. So, the, from red channel would basically create a pack channel that is identically with your roughness in size. Bit dev, I'm going to leave at 8 bit in this case and the color space at linear because all of these channels are data channels, meaning they should not have any sRGB lookup applied. The scalar checkbox at the end is a Mari internal process that basically tells it whenever I view the channel, the resulting channel, to turn off the viewport lookup, the view transform, so your values will be displayed as the straight linear values instead of a color managed value. I'm going to create a second identical channel just to show you something a little bit further on. So let's pick the roughness, metalness, amine occlusion, and in this case I'm going to choose something for the alpha channel as well. And let's create our pack channels. So here we have the resulting pack channel. And you can see it's uh, very colorful because obviously each color channel has vastly different information in it. You can actually preview each individual component. However, because we have the scalar data checked on, this does not work by default. So let me quickly show you something and quickly talk about the color space toolbar at the bottom here. If you don't have that, you can access it by right clicking in the interface and choosing the color space toolbar at the bottom. Now, usually if I turn this on and off at the moment, you don't see any change. However, if I turn off the scalar data checkbox that I ticked on in the interface, you can see now my interface got a little bit brighter. And this is because now the viewport has a view transform applied to it again. So basically the color space toolbar is evaluated. So if I turn this off, I would get the result that I had previously when the scalar data checkbox is turned on, which basically just tells Mari to ignore anything from the color space toolbar. When I take this off, I can actually make use of the component mode here. So I can choose, for example, just to see the red channel, which was my roughness channel, my green channel, which was my metalness channel, or my blue channel, which was my amine occlusion channel. Now, as I said, in this case, because we're looking through uh, at things through a view transform, as you can see here, an sRGB view transform, the values are a little bit brighter than they should be. However, this is just a Mari internal viewport thing. So on export, if you export your um, pack channel, all the values would still be linear. Let's take a quick look at the second channel we created. 
So here we have the second pack channel with the embedded alpha channel. Now let's try and quickly do the same thing here. So we tick off the scalar checkbox and we view the individual components. So we have the RGB here, the red channel, green channel, blue channel, etc. Now you'll notice that even though I'm looking at the components, so the red channel, I still have these transparent areas. So this is just a Mari viewport kind of thing because Mari will pre-multiply each component channel with the alpha channel. This is only in the viewport. So on export, your uh, areas for this, for this uh, base area would still be completely solid. So you don't have to worry about having a pre-multiplication. It's just a Mari viewport thing. So this was one way to create a pack channel and let's move on to the second way, which is via the node graph. So here we are in the main Mari scene graph. So you can access that via the file uh, so added preferences, node graph, and turning on the advanced view. So if you don't have the main root graph, then you can turn it on this way. And in here, just to quickly explain, we have our channel nodes here, which correspond to our channels we have here. And here, this is our shader node. So I'm going to create a new pack channel node, and you can find those under the right-click nodes channels. And here we have some four different nodes, RGB-A merge, and RGB A merge. So I'm going to create the RGB A merge node first, which is the equivalent of the add pack channel functionality in the channel palette we've seen before. So we have the four different ports, the red, green, blue, and alpha. And I can just plug stuff in there. So I'm going to take my roughness, plug this in here, my metalness in the green channel, um, my ambient occlusion in the blue. Let's leave the alpha channel unmapped here. And let's quickly view this. And you can see we have the same kind of colorful result. Let's create a new channel. Call utility channel as before. Set our size and tick on scalar data and make sure the color space is linear. And let's create the node. And you can see we have a new channel pop up in our channel palette as well. So if we connect this and um, were to export our utility channel, we would export our pack channels. Now let's quickly take a look at the way we can separate them again. We have under the nodes channels, we have some very split nodes. So we can use the RGBA split node, feed in the output here, and then we can use the different outputs again to access the individual channels. So for example, if I press one and select the red channel, now I would view just my roughness channel again. Just a little heads up, there's currently a bug in Mari. If you have uh, nodes with multiple outputs, such as here, so here, for example, the utility channel only has one output, while this node has four outputs. If you view the individual outputs, there's no connection to the viewer. However, you can see in the viewport, everything is working fine. Um, one little thing, these split nodes, they have a pre-multiply transparency option. So for example, if I were to attach something into my alpha of the original RGBA, by default, nothing will change here. However, if I turn on the pre-multiplied transparency option, you will see the alpha will get pre-multiplied. And this would be happening in export as well if this is turned on. Why is this there? It's uh, useful if you're using, for example, the various stencil options that Mari Extension Pack offers, for example, to project decals. And uh, in this case, you sometimes want to have the alpha pre-multiplied with stuff. So this is why it's there. But usually for pure pack channels, you just want to turn it off. Now we have a second pack channel node, which was called the RGB-A node. So we have here, if I zoom in a little bit, we have RGB-A merge and RGB-A merge. And the difference is simply that you can see here, we have the individual channels, while on the RGB-A merge, we have just two inputs, one for RGB and one for alpha. So for example, I could go ahead and take my, uh, where is it, my normal map channel and just plug this in as one, so I, the normal map channel would inherit the red, green, and blue channel, and then I can put, for example, the amino occlusion into the alpha channel. Um, let me just get rid of the RGBA merge, uh, so the RGBA split node, and then create a RGB-A split node. And again, you can see the same procedure, we can separate things into RGB and alpha. And again, we have the pre-multiplied transparency here as well. Um, Quick note on the RGB A merge and RGB dash A merge, we have the same settings that we have on the add pack channel functionality. So we can specify which of these inputs. So if I look at, for example, my M in occlusion channel here, so this connection that goes to the blue channel, 
By default, it uses the red channel of the ambient occlusion, but I could set it to anything else. So this covers the changes or additions to the node graph on the pack channel functionality. It's a bit chaotic here at the moment. I hope this wasn't too bad. Um, and yeah, let's see you next tutorial.